Good morning. I was born about 22 years ago, right here in Bucharest, Romania. And about two years after I was born, I looked something like this. Well, really, that's not what is important. Um, what's a bit more important, I was born in a family where both of my parents have a severe locomotive handicap. And really, we're living in a house where things were very different. The rooms have different names. The position of the light switch was different. We, the rooms we had had different places where they were supposed to be. And uh, by the first time I, I grew up and I went to another house, I couldn't understand it. Why is it like that? Why, why a normal house is like that? Well, the house in which, which I was living in was made to better suit my parents. But really, that made me question a lot of things. And uh, there's actually a great quote on that by Dieter Rams. Question everything for to be obvious. Well, really, I want to talk about innovation today. And uh, innovation starts from thinking differently. Really, living in a different environment made me think quite different, at least when I was young. But also, a few other things about innovation. Innovation must make meaning. Innovation for the purpose of innovation is wrong. Innovation for the purpose of making money is worse. Innovation really has to create meaning. A couple of years ago, I was discussing with a colleague of mine in university, and we ended up to the syntax, glasses for the blind. Now, what are glasses for the blind? Well, we didn't really know. But we began researching, and what we found was quite interesting. There are 40 million visually impaired people. These people are either blind or have a severe visual handicap. They're not able to see. And with all the technology we have now in 2016, the most used solution for them is not even technical. The guide dogs. And yes, they are cute, but in reality, they are very expensive. They're hard to train, and they're hard to maintain. And the worst problem, actually, is that we have 40 million visually impaired, but we only have 20,000 guide dogs in the world. Those numbers do not match. So we began thinking if we can do something better than this. So we invented a thing called Lumen. Now, what is Lumen? It's a pair of glasses. They look sort of like a pair of glasses. You put them on like a pair of glasses, but they really work quite different than a pair of glasses. How do they work? Well, they have this 3D sensor, which can understand the distance and the shape of everything in front of the user. It knows there's a black thing over here, a monitor. It knows there's a second one here. It knows someone on a floor. And we take all that information, and we transfer it to the brain using electrical impulses on the forehead. Well, to make an analogy, if I would have this object over here, I would feel a slight tingling in my forehead, in this area. If it's closer, the tingling is more powerful. If it's further away, it's less. But if I would have this object over here, I would feel it here. And if the object would be moving, I would just feel it all over the forehead, how it is moving. By doing this in people who have better tactile feel, you can really get, get some amazing results. People, for the first time, were able to walk through an open door without touching it. Blind people. They are able to understand the environment they are in without touching anything. They were able to catch a ball for the first time in their lives. Right now, Lumen is in a late prototyping stages. We're doing indoor tests. Hopefully, next year, we'll be doing outdoor tests. And who knows, in two years, most probably will be on the market. But really, when we started this thing, we never thought about making money out of it. We just thought about making some meaning out of it, bringing some meaning in what we're doing. But what we found on the way is that the market for this product is in the order of billions of dollars. Make meaning, not money. Money will come afterwards. Innovation is usually connecting the dots. Now, what dots would you imagine can be connected? For example, what would be the relationship between a Toyota Hilux pickup truck and newborn babies? Well. In the world, it turns out we have these things called incubators. When a prematurely born infant is born, you have to put it in such an incubator to be kept at a constant temperature for a prolonged period of time. The problem with these devices is that they are incredibly expensive, and developing countries cannot afford them. So the people in Africa were thinking, OK, what can we do about this? They had all these Toyota Hilux pickup trucks, 
So they took the headlights from a Toyota Hilux pickup truck and used them as heat sources in an incubator. This is the cheapest incubator in the world. It sells thousands of lives each day. Innovation comes from exposure. Now, right now, the industry and academic life generally teaches us to focus very, very much on one thing. And we have a lot of experts. The problem is, when you focus a lot on one thing, you kind of lose sight of what's around you. And that's why we have quotes like this one. The CEO of IBM said in 1943 that I think there is a world for maybe five computers in everywhere. We have 500 computers in this room today. Experts are just clueless. Personally, being also a musician, a photographer, and a world traveler, exposed expose me to a completely different mindset. And whenever there's a problem, I try to tackle it from way different perspectives than an engineer would usually do it. For example, some of my most recent ideas and patents come from combining the photography industry with the automotive industry. We have great artists and engineers and scientists in the photography industry. We have great engineers in the automotive industry. It just happens we don't have some of them which are in both. And the problems in the automotive industry, some of the problems right now, have been solved 20 years ago in the photography industry. But nobody knows that until somebody is exposed to more than just one domain. A thing which is very difficult is to judge ideas, if they are good, if they are bad. It's worse when you're trying to judge your own ideas. This is something I took from uh, Guy Kawasaki. I'm a big fan of his. It's called the value of ideas. You have on the bottom of axis of value, how much value is in an idea. On the vertical axis, you have a unique level. So really, this is a two by two matrix. In a two by two matrix, there are four possible solutions. You can have a product which has a great value, but it's not unique. Daisha is an automaker in the world which makes cheap cars. It's not, they are not the only cheap cars in the world, but they are valuable. They are cars. They help us with mobility. In that corner, you have to compete in price. On the opposite corner, you can have something which is very unique, but brings no value. Typically, that's where clowns are right now. But it can be much worse than that. You can have something which is not unique and brings no value. That's just plain stupid. But the real ideas, the best ones, the best products, are the ones you find in the top right corner. That's where markets are created. That's where meaning is created. A thing which I stand by is that anybody can innovate. And you would expect that innovation comes from people in lab coats using microscopes in fancy research labs. But that simply is not true anymore. And I think it was never true. There's a very interesting and fun story, a true story, from the toothpaste industry. There was this factory which was uh, selling toothpaste tubes with the toothpaste in them. But their assembly line has a small, had a small issue, and from time to time, they were shipping tubes which were empty. The customers were getting very frustrated of this. So the management approved the research project to fix this. They spent millions into developing a scale which can measure the weight of each tube with the toothpaste in on the assembling line. Whenever it found a tube which didn't have any toothpaste by winning it, it stopped the assembling line, and it made a horrible sound. They turned on the machine, everything worked, no more empty toothpaste tubes. But three months later, they come, and they check the machine. The machine has detected zero empty tubes. Now, how is that possible? Well, it turns out that one of the operators in the factory floor was so annoyed by the sound that the machine made that he put a fan two meters before the machine. That fan was pushing away all the empty tubes. With $20, he solved a $1 million issue. Anybody can innovate. This year, I wrote 49 patents. I'm leading over 20 innovation projects, just like Lumen. And I've been nominated by Forbes USA as being one of the 10 most influential people under 30 in Europe. For Thank you. But really, it was just 
taking an idea from here, an idea from here, and connecting them for the first time in a way which nobody thought of before. So my question for you right now is, which dots will you connect? Thank you.